You know, it's not about the skills. It's about how you use them, said no one ever. So let's rank these skills, going from S tier being the best in all situations, down to D tier, which are basically a waste of skill points. So let's open up our lovely chest of skills, and we will start with Nova. Now Nova is really, really cool. What Nova allows us to do is take a big bunch of enemies like this, and then just blast them all with an explosion. Now, as you can see from that, that did not do a huge amount of damage. And the reason that it didn't is because it's based on your current damage. And we were just holding a vault crystal. If we do this properly with a level zero ax and a level zero set of armor, we can run up to them, wait for them to spawn and then do a reasonable amount of damage. Now you can do this multiple times, but at level one, it's really not gonna do much damage for you at all. If however, we start adding some additional skill points in, you can level the damage up from 25% all the way up to 100% of your damage. Now that basically means that you're getting a free attack on all of the enemies around you. So if you are completely surrounded, that can be quite useful. However, 16 skill points for one attack is a little bit pricey. There are also significantly better options that we will come to later on that you can use for AOE damage. So to start things off, we are going to put Nova into C tier. It has very mediocre damage, it costs quite a lot to get into, and overall, there's just much better options. Now that is not the case for Poison. Nova Poison is actually one of the best abilities in Vault Hunters. What Nova Poison does is it allows you to give a poison effect which does damage over time to enemies around you. It gives you much more damage than Nova does, but that is not the reason why it is so good. The reason it is so good is because of this. Look at that knockback. And if you combine that with the additional damage that you get, it becomes very, very good. The only thing to be aware of is when you get to level 11, there's actually a glitch at the moment with the damage. It should be 100%, but it is only at 10%. And that continues all the way up. It'll go from 12% to 13%. So at the minute, you don't want to be putting a crazy amount of points into it because it will actually reduce your damage. But once it's fixed, it's going to be insane. And that's the reason it's going to be our first ability in the S tier. Now, Frost Nova is a little bit different. What Frost Nova does is it removes all of the damage from Nova, but in exchange, it allows you to take mobs and just freeze them in place so they can no longer chase you. A word of caution on this though, if you freeze them and you're still stood close, they can still attack you, which can lead to quite awkward moments. Now, at low levels, this is not particularly good. It'll allow you to freeze mobs in a small area for five seconds, which can be enough time to get away from some mobs if they are getting pretty close to you. However, it doesn't give you a huge amount of protection because they can still attack you. As you add more levels into it though, it increases the radius and the duration dramatically. And this can be very useful, especially when you're fighting bosses. Because what you can do is summon a boss, freeze them in place, and then they won't be able to follow you. Now, the only problem is they can still throw their ranged attacks. So if the boss has a ranged attack, then it's not going to be particularly great. However, it does freeze them in place for quite a long time and they won't be able to chase you at all. It is a little bit of a cheesy strat and whether you want to use it or not is down to you, but it can be quite useful early game if you're having to fight those bosses. Now, if the mobs couldn't attack you at all, this would definitely be up in S or A tier, but because they can still attack you, and is quite expensive to get it up to the high levels, I think B tier is a very good place for it. So moving on to the next one, we have an old favorite in Rampage, and the new abilities for Rampage are Vampire and Chain. I don't think anything's ever gonna be as overpowered as Shaman was in 1.16, but these are still some great abilities. First up, Normal Rampage gives you a 5% damage boost at the cost of two mana per second, which is fine. It's nothing special, it's just extra damage, and there's not really any downside to it other than using some mana, so you can't complain too much at that. Once you start pumping a bunch of skill points into it though, 
you can start getting to some absolutely crazy numbers like 160% damage. And that's 160% extra damage so 260 percent damage in total now the easiest way to show this off is just to run straight at this poi and show you how quickly you can take it out so we proc rampage and one there you go they're dead and one over here you're dead and you're dead nice and easy now obviously you're not going to have 32 levels of rampage shaman at a level zero volt however your gear will increase with you so your base damage that this goes off will increase as you run higher level volts which means that your additional damage is based off a higher base damage so you will have pretty much that exact effect and when we were on stream testing all of this out we ran level 50 volts level 16 volts all this sort of stuff and it was still super broken now the community Community was a little bit torn on this one on whether we should be putting it in S tier or A tier. The biggest drawback really is the 32 points you need to put in because you only get about 5% damage for every skill point which does add up but it's not super overpowered at the beginning so in the end we settled on A tier. A very very powerful ability but a little bit expensive to get into. Now, if you are running more of a tank-based build, then Vampire is going to be a much better shout for you. Now, what Vampire allows you to do is to heal a ridiculous amount from your attacks instead of gaining the extra damage. So, if we accidentally drop off a ledge, then we can proc this and then start healing quite rapidly from these mobs. Get hit a few times, that's fine, you can just heal that straight back up. 9% leech is a lot. With the new archetypes that have been released as well, things like Berserker, which gives you very little health but massive damage increase, is going to get a huge buff from Vampire, as well as something like Ward, where you just want to have a massive health pull and just constantly be healing. This will work good for you as well. And this does stack with normal leech weapons as well, so you're going to be able to heal a ridiculous amount with the right setup. Now, a question that got asked quite a lot in our community was, is that 9% leech worth sacrificing all of that damage for? Because it's still 32 skill points to gain that healing. And my answer is no. No, it's not. It is still very, very viable. And if you are struggling to survive, it's definitely worth considering. But I don't think it's in A tier alongside Rampage. I think having that extra damage is going to do you a lot better than just being able to get some extra healing especially when we have the heal ability. For that reason, I'm dropping it down a tier and it can go next to Frost Nova in the B tier. It's quite good, but it's not completely game-changing. Now, Chain doesn't really need a whole lot of explanation. You walk up to some mobs, you activate Chain, and then it hits more enemies. Pretty straightforward. At level one, it creates two chains. So if, for example, you have four mobs here and you hit one of them, it will hit three mobs. Fairly straightforward, and it does the same amount of damage as your primary attack. So honestly, super, super good. However, there is one slight drawback to this. You can very easily stick one point into Rampage and then one point into Chain and get those extra two chains. However, as you start increasing the amount of levels, you'll see that there's actually no impact at all on Chain. At least not until you put your 17th point into Chain, at which point all it does is gives you one extra Chain and doubles the mana per second, which means that Chain is effectively a one-point wonder, and we're going to see quite a few of those as we go through the list. It is very, very good to just stick one point in, but you're not going to be able to get much more out of it unless you're very, very late into the game. So whereabouts does that put this? Well, arguably, if you can attack three things every time you do one hit, that would put it towards the top. However, putting a lot of points into it to get minimal benefit is very low tier. So realistically, we're looking somewhere mid-table and... I think we're going to probably put it in B tier alongside Vampire. That chain is super powerful, but you're missing out on the extra damage and the upgrades are very meh. 
But this is actually a good point to mention that because we are still in alpha, a lot of this is subject to change. If there's a major rebalance patch, we'll do this video again. But this is what we've got to go with for the time being. Okay, now it's time for a little bit of disappointment. Welcome to the wonderful world of Farmer. You can't call it Twerker. It's not even anywhere close to how good Twerker used to be. So just to kind of prove the point, I'm going to just max out Farmer. And what this should do is it should allow us to grow seeds, potatoes, carrot, beetroot, flax. And I have built a very trusty wheat farm just to show how underwhelming this ability is. So let's clear up all of this that has grown naturally. And again, bear in mind, this is absolutely maxed out. So we will activate it. Yep, that, that, that's right. This is 10 skill points. You know, it, it makes me very, very sad. And the extra drawback to this is it uses mana, which means that this is going to run out after a while and you're going to have to just stop and wait for it to recharge. If you really want to grow like one wheat, then sure, it, it can be quite useful, but you can just use bone meal. Honestly, this is 10 skill points to get worse than bone meal. D tier, absolutely no question about that. And you know what? So are all of the others. Cultivator is growing melons and pumpkins. Gardener is for growing cactuses and sugarcane, as well as netherwort, which is a kind of okay use, I guess. And Rancher is for making your animals grow quicker. And especially since the introduction of the animal pens, Rancher is now completely useless because you don't need to wait for animals to grow up anymore once you've bred them. You can literally just get the animal pen, feed it, and then you have fully grown adults. So yeah, if there was a less than D tier, that is where this ability would go. It is very underwhelming and it is one of the abilities that used to be fantastic and is now just awful. All right, enough of that. Let's do something much more fun. It's heal time. Okay, at this point, you probably know what heal does. It heals you. Pretty simple. And every time you put a point into heal, it will either reduce the mana cost, increase the mana cost, but provide more hearts, or reduce the cooldown as well. And at max level, you can restore five full hearts every six seconds at a cost of 35 mana, which seems like a lot at the beginning of the game. But honestly, as you get progressively further through and your mana regeneration and your mana pool get bigger, you shouldn't have too much of a problem restoring most of your health just using this ability. And anyone that's done any vaults will tell you that this is a super, super good ability because you can just take on a POI, take out the spawner, and then heal back to full again. Absolutely incredible. And group heal does basically the same thing, but it also allows you to heal all of your allies that are around you. The only downside with group heal is that it costs more mana than regular heal. So if you are the cleric or healer for your party, just make sure that you take the group heal ability as well as getting your mana pool as high as possible, as quick as possible. Both heal and group heal are 100% S tier abilities. They are absolutely fantastic. Not dying is the best thing you can do in a vault, so anything that helps you not die is a win in my books. Now cleanse is a really tricky one to place. It does pretty much what it did in 1.16, which is it removes all negative status effects, which is fantastic. If you're poisoned or withered or something like that, it is really good to have. However, it has one massive drawback. You can't take heal. I am putting cleanse into D tier purely because you can't take heal. That's, that's it. There's no other reason. It's actually a really good ability, but you just shouldn't take it because heals just so much better. Now there's a few abilities that don't have any specializations. So we are going to just lump them all together and fly through them now. Ghost Walker, Summon Eternal, Execute, Mana Shield, and Stonefall. Now firstly, Summon Eternal. This one is a bit tricky because it's broken. Yep, that's right, we're in alpha. It doesn't actually work. You can summon an Eternal into a vault, but it won't have any of the armor that you've put on it. So currently it's definitely D tier 
And it's going to have to go there until they fix it, because otherwise I'm not going to have any idea on whether it's actually any good. So you can actually go in the bottom corner, because I don't think you'll end up being in D tier, but for the time being, you'll just have to stay there. Now in a similar vein to this, Stonefall is getting a buff in the next patch, where it's going to reduce the mana cost as you sink more points into it. And it will still do the same thing, it'll still remove fall damage. Now, it's no secret that I love Stonefall, I think it's a great ability, but currently... Ghost Walker also removes fall damage, which means that Stonefall, while it will be slightly cheaper from a mana perspective, is actually going to do less than if you just put a bunch of points into Ghost Walker. So I think for the time being, Stonefall, it's not useless, it's fairly decent, but there are better options out there. So we're going to put that one into C tier. So I mentioned Ghost Walker. Let me show you something really cool that Ghost Walker can do. So there is a spawner over there that I want to deal with without dealing with the mobs. Well, I can quite simply run up to it, activate Ghost Walk, and break the spawner. And hopefully, I should have just about enough time to get that done before they start attacking me. And if you have an even better pickaxe than this Efficiency 5 Netherite pickaxe, then you're going to be able to have plenty of time to deal with those mobs. And as I said earlier, you can just use it to negate full damage. Now that is a lot of utility for not a huge investment and you can even just put one point into this to negate fall damage or just as like a get out of jail free card. So I think it's going to need to go near the top, not quite as good as these guys, it's going to go into A tier. Very powerful, definitely worth pumping a few points into, but not quite as powerful as something like heal. Now let's talk about mana shield, because I think a lot of people are sleeping on how good mana shield is. At level 1, for 2 mana a second, you basically reduce all your damage by 10%. But that is not why it's crazy. It's crazy because when you stick 10 points into it, that's 100%. 100% of your damage that goes to mana instead of your health. So let's think about this logically. You normally have 10 hearts, which is 20 health. Those do not regenerate by themselves in the vault. But instead, what you can do in a vault is transfer all of that damage that would go to your hearts into a 100 base mana pool that regenerates by itself. It's like having constant regen. And on top of that, you can increase the speed it regenerates and you can make the health pool bigger. So it is honestly absolutely fantastic. But let me show you this because this is just absolutely wild. I'm going to remove all of my armor and just have my vault axe. And then we're going to spawn this boss in and activate mana shield. And... Other than the absolutely awful sound it's making, we can basically just chunk down this boss without taking any damage. Look at this. We're perfectly fine. I have no armor on. I literally, look, there's no armor. I killed the boss with no armor on because I had mana shield. That's how broken this is. It's honestly insane, and I love it so much. Now, if that doesn't sell Mana Shield to you, I honestly don't know what will. That is 100% S tier, no questions asked. Now, the final one in this section is Execute, and Execute is really, really powerful at higher levels. At the beginning, it will remove 5% of an enemy's total hit points, which is a decent chunk of damage. But as you level it up, that figure goes up all the way up to 50% which means you can start doing what you did in 1.16, where you take a boss down to half HP and then kill it in one hit. It is very powerful. Honestly, one of the better abilities in Vault Hunters. But following on from the same logic that we've been using before, if you need to put a lot of skill points into it to make it worth it, it probably drops down a tier. So I'm going to put this one in A tier. It is a fantastic ability, but the 5% it starts out with is not great. But once you get up to the sort of 40 and 50%, it becomes very, very powerful. So some of the abilities haven't changed a whole lot since 1.16. Vein Miner and Mega Jump are two very good examples of that. That being said, they have been balanced a little bit strangely. And honestly, I think both of these are not as good as they used to be. So let's start out with Vein Miner. 
The big problem with Vein Miner is how many skill points you need to get the same effects that you got previously. So, you start out only being able to Vein Mine 4 blocks, and then it goes to 8, 12, 16, and so on, all the way up to a maximum of 128. Now, for those of you that played 1.16, you'll know it used to be 64 as a max, it's now 128, which is quite a big improvement. However, you need 32 skill points in order to get it up to that point. And that's 32 skill points that you could be spending on some of these lovely S tier abilities. It doesn't work any differently. You can just hold it down and take out chunks at a time and they will just fall to the ground. But it is a much bigger investment this time. So honestly, Vein Mine, not quite as good as it used to be, but still a very solid ability. And what do we do with abilities that are strong but not game changing? That's right, we put them straight into the A tier. Once you've had Vein Miner, it becomes a massive struggle to run Vault Hunters without having it. So it is definitely a very good ability. It's just not quite as good as it used to be. It's a lot of skill points now. That being said, Vein Mine Fortune is actually more powerful than it used to be. This will revert your Vein Miner back down to 64 blocks but it will also give you an extra level of fortune. Now, fortune is super important to get more gems out of your vault ores. Whether it's Laramar, Black Opal, or one of the player gems that you need, the more fortune you have, the more you're going to get. So it is fantastic. And it's even better now because you cannot over-enchant your pickaxe. The max level that you can get is fortune 3, and then you get an extra level if you've got vein minor fortune. So that one level of fortune is going to have a much bigger impact than it did previously. Plus, since you can technically get the benefits with just one skill point, there's no reason that fortune should not be an S tier ability. Now, we actually had quite a hard time placing finesse because on the surface, it seems like a very good ability. What it does is it adds extra unbreaking levels to your pickaxe, but it also halves the amount of blocks that you mine, which sounds great until you realize that in the early game, you're pretty much going to rely on a netherite efficiency 5 pickaxe anyway, which is going to have mending on it, so you won't need the extra unbreaking levels. And then when you get to late game, you're going to use an echoing jewel, which completely removes all durability damage in the overworld anyway. And that's where you mine most of your blocks. So when we look at it, it's probably down in D tier, because it's not a very good ability just by itself, and it stops you taking normal vein mine and fortune, which are huge things to sacrifice just for a pickaxe to last a little bit longer. But void is a very interesting one. Void will literally make any block that you mine inside a vault just disappear, except for voltors, which makes this ability insanely good for a mine room. So that immediately pulls it out of D tier, but actually, it's still a very niche case scenario. It's not actually useful for general purposes, and outside of the vault, it doesn't work at all. So... C tier? C tier. Okay, Mega Jump. This one is a little bit of a sad one as well, because Mega Jump and Dash used to work very, very well together. Now, there is one slight problem. Fall damage. So let's say you're in a vault and you want to go up to the high ground. You walk forward, you mega jump up, and then you take fall damage. Granted, because I've got some feather falling four boots on, it wasn't a ridiculous amount of fall damage, but you all saw the hearts, they did go clunk. And then if you miss your ability, you actually take quite a lot of damage. And that adds up very quickly. And because Elvish has been removed and you now have to rely on either finding a trinket or going around and using Stonefall or Ghost Walk in order to be able to negate the fall damage, you're going to actually start chunking through mana pretty quickly. Or worst case scenario, you kind of mess up and you end up taking a bunch of damage. Because this is only one floor. And some of the rooms have three floors. And that's a lot of fall damage. Now the specializations are not much better, to be completely honest with you. Drill does exactly what it did before. But with this huge caveat, it does not work in the overworld. Now in 1.16, a lot of people used to use drill in order to be able to gather things like granite and andesite and it was actually reasonably useful but removing the ability to do that basically leaves you in a very weird situation you can basically try and use it to get out of a low floor onto a higher floor which is fine except you don't get the horizontal movement so again quite easy to kill yourself and dig 
does exactly the same thing, but in reverse. But surely there's an upside, maybe you can mine ores with it, or break spawners with it. Sorry to disappoint you, but no. You can't break spawners with it, and if you do use it on ores, they don't benefit from Silk Touch or Fortune. So you're basically just wasting the ore. Might be slightly controversial, but I'm sticking all of them in D tier. I don't think any of them are worth taking. If you've got a way to completely mitigate fall damage like Elvish Air, it might be worth taking, but otherwise, really, really not beneficial for you. And I will definitely die more times to it than I'll benefit from it. So let's go to Mega Jump 2.0, which is actually a useful ability, otherwise known as Dash. Now, Dash is even better than it was before. Well, you still have to kind of deal with fall damage, but you do have that horizontal factor which you can use to kind of offset the fall damage. I can dash onto my roof and I don't take any fall damage, so it's super useful. Definitely one of the best mobility skills in Vault Hunters, and you should be using this all of the time, to be honest with you. Now, dash by itself is a pretty fantastic ability. You can just use it to get around the vault, absolutely no problems at all. You can also use it to replace Mega Jump and get up to high places without having too many issues. However, that is not where it excels, and there's a reason that we are running a level 12 vault. When you stick the specialization of dash, which is 14 mana for 14 distance on one second cooldown, into bullet, still one second cooldown, still 14 distance, just slightly more mana, you also get 215% of your weapon damage anytime that you go through a mob. And just to show you how ridiculously insane this is, I've gathered up a few mobs, and then if we can line them up properly just here and go to survival mode, they're all dead. There you go. One dash. All the mobs are dead. And bear in mind as well, it is the same thing as Rampage. It scales off of your weapon's damage. Now, because dash bullet is actually so good, I'm gonna have to reduce normal dash down to A tier. I genuinely didn't think that would be something that I would ever do, but because you're basically only sacrificing a little bit of mana, dash bullet is now S tier and normal dash is A tier. Sometimes I don't believe the words that come out of my mouth. Dash is like my favorite ability and yeah, A tier. So we only have a few left to go, so I'm gonna run through those very quickly for you now. Hunter is much, much better in 1.18 because it locates chests instead of locating mobs. The one downside is it does only last for 0.5 seconds, but if you are looking for those POIs, you can find them pretty quickly. And as you level it up, that duration gets higher and higher and higher up until eight second duration in a 62 radius on a 2.5 second cooldown. That's kind of crazy. You can basically always have it up as long as you have enough mana. Observer is even better because what that does is it highlights vault objectives. Now this room here is actually a perfect example of when Hunter would be good because you could spend a very long time in here looking for chests, but if you go like this, you can see there's actually no chests here. And why are there no chests? Because these are filled with compressed blocks. So you don't need to be spending a bunch of time looking for chests in a room that is trying to kill you. But if you're in a different room, you can see them very clearly and look one, two, three, four, five, very easy to locate all of the POIs in this room, including all of the hidden ones that you'll find dotted around. If we now change our specialization into Observer, then we can activate it and see that there is actually no obelisk in this room at all. If you do find one though, it will show up green like that, and then you can see, there we go, we have an obelisk right here. It's very good for finding monoliths as well as obelisks. It honestly will save you an absolute ton of time in the vaults, a really, really good ability to invest into, even if it's just a couple of points, it's going to save you a bunch of time. Now, both of these are pretty good, but I think objectively it is better to be able to find the objectives than it is to be able to find the chests. So I think Hunter can go into B tier and Observer can go into A tier. They are nice to have, but they're not 100% necessary, but definitely worth sticking a couple of points into. Now, Tank is an interesting one. The unspecialized tank ability does 
basically what it did in 1.16. It's going to give you just a bunch of resistance. The higher you go, the more resistance that you get up until the maximum, which is 50%. Now, being able to halve your damage is very, very useful. However, 16 points to be able to reduce your damage by half for 7 mana per second. You could just use Mana Shield, which is going to give you much, much better outcomes, and it's a lot cheaper. So, tank, really... A worse version of mana shield it does have some use case scenarios though and if you are being absolutely swarmed it can help you survive it's definitely not down in d tier i'm gonna put it solidly in c tier it's an okay ability but there are better options that you've got now the interesting thing about the rock specialization is it gives you 100 percent projectile resistance at max level as well as knockback resistance the mana cost is still way too high though to make it completely viable but you know what it's like when you have those skeletons shooting arrows at you? They can be extremely frustrating, so it will help quite a bit. The thing is, though, taking half damage from all sources, I would say is probably on par with taking no damage from one source and then not having resistance. So I think this one's probably on par with normal tank as well. It's an okay one. It's not something you should spec into super early but it does have its uses. And Porcupine, I've tested out quite a lot. It's a reduced mana cost compared to the other two, and it actually does a decent amount of damage if you have stacks of levels in Thorns. Now, the downside is that you are going to need to augment this with your Thorns chance and Thorns damage, but it just frankly makes those a little bit better. Now, it's definitely possible to run a 1.16 style Porcupine build. It's a little bit different though, but honestly, if you prop Porcupine just as you're dashing through things or if you're fighting a boss, it can be quite useful, but it's not game-breaking by any means. It is an okay amount of damage. It's not a crazy amount of damage. For that reason, it's going solidly in B tier. It's definitely better than the other tanks, but I'd say it's probably on par with something like Vampire or Chain, which will give you some benefit, but not completely game-changing. I'm sure someone has found an exploit to make it crazy powerful, but in my testing, it didn't seem that overpowered. And so we come to our final two abilities. Taunt, and fear. Now taunt we actually cannot test out. Because we are in single player it will not let us test out taunt's ability at all. However looking at the ability and what it does it's going to be very useful for multiplayer because what this ability does is it basically forces mobs to focus you instead of your teammates and as you level it up it can get a little bit crazy where you can actually get mobs to attack you for 13 and a half seconds so if you are running a tank build it is definitely worth doing something like this because you can protect your team and it's very much RPG style. Focus the tank and let the damage dealers do their job. So we're going to put it in B tier because it is slightly situational. It's extremely useful if you're the tank. It's not that useful if you're not the tank. Very situational. B tier is the perfect place for it. We can, however, test out fear. Now, fear is a very good ability because what you can do is run up to one of these POIs and use fear and they will just run away from you. And you can do this multiple times. You can send mobs flying away and they will all be scared of you. And it leaves you completely free to loot these POIs without any problems until this happens. And all of the mobs that you cast fear on earlier are now chasing you. You can of course fear again, but eventually you are going to run out of mana. And at that point, you're in some serious, serious trouble. You know the saying, don't put off till tomorrow what you can take care of today? Well, this is a prime example of that. You can compound your problems later on if you want a quick bit of loot now. So this one is going alongside Taunt in B tier because it is a very good ability, very strong for being able to loot things, but you're going to end up with an entire vault full of crazy mobs all trying to kill you at the same time, which is really not an ideal place to be. So the one last thing that we need to do before we go is for you to subscribe to the channel. That's right, I plugged it a little bit earlier today. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel it really helps me out and we are so so close to 5,000 subscribers that has been a goal of mine for a very long time and i would really appreciate it that is where we are going to leave it for today everyone thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the tier list 
I've been Hellfire Mage, and I will see you next time.